From hot spots and hidden gems to lots of local flavor, it's your guide to LA, the unscripted way. And tonight we have the proof LA is bubbling up with booze. and welcome to LA Unscripted. I'm Dana Devon and this is Green Bar Distillery in downtown LA and it's our first stop on a tour of SoCal's coolest distilleries and breweries. Owned and run by the cutest couple ever, Green Bar specializes in mocktails. This is where the magic happens, <laughs> clearly. Whiskey tanks behind us, infusion tanks to the right of us, canning line to the left of us. A lot of moving parts and pieces that end up in something that makes you pleasantly surprised. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Dana, I'm inside LA's first distillery since Prohibition, but it's their non-alcoholic drinks that's got everybody buzzing. We make the world's largest collection of organic spirits. Oh my gosh, so good. This is perfection. My gosh. Green Bar began in 2004 as LA's first distillery since the prohibition. We make vodka, we make gin, we make rum, we make whiskey, we make sweet liqueurs, we make bitter liqueurs, we make bitters, we make non-alcoholic as well as alcoholic canned cocktails. What is your favorite? That's like trying to Tell, asking me to pick a favorite child, how dare you? My wife and I met in graduate journalism school and after 10 years of courting her, she finally said yes. And, and we were all being toasted, of course, but my wife-to-be really didn't like any of the liquor we were serving. So I began to make her something that she could drink at these events involving complex infusions of fruits and herbs and flowers anything that I thought would make her happy drinking with the family. And 19 years later, here we are. Does it taste alcoholic to you? It does, actually. Like you're having a... It does sort of taste a... like I'm having a cocktail. I'm going to say this one is the unrum and cola. Oh, very good. Yes. And our vision was to make things that would make beautiful cocktails. And then we started to make gin, and then rum, and then whiskey, liqueurs, bitters, bitter liqueurs, even tequila. About three years ago, when we took a left turn into, you know, canned cocktails and then non-alcoholic cocktails most recently, we make six. Three bitters and soda, and three what we call highballs. These like gin and tonic, rum and cola, or spritz. Is this the spritz one? It is, and it's, it's a hibiscus spritz. Ding, ding, ding. So we changed everything to organic, as well as to began to plant trees and use uh, very lightweight bottles and recyclable and recycled labels. Yes, we're not big companies. We can't like, you know, change uh, the laws and make huge moves, but as a tiny little company, we've planted over a million trees. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This ungin and tonic is really good. And I'm a gin and tonic girl. My work is done here. It is, it is. <laughs> There's a heart on all Green Bar products, and it's really about, <laughs> it's really about the other partner, my husband, Mel Cohn, and me. You know, it's our love for each other. It's a, the love of what we do and, and the love of Los Angeles. The secret to what makes Green Bar really tick is my wife and my relationship because we're kind of made of two minds uh, as an editor-reporter relationship and we kind of, you know, learn from each other. We bring in the cultures, the foods of our cultures that make LA thrive into all of our products. So that's what, you know, kind of makes it fun to come to work every day, create something new and exciting and share it with the world. I love that. Cheers! Cheers! What a cool space. I'm about to tap that keg right now, but we are just getting started. Let's head to El Segundo now, where Olivia De Bertoli and her pal Matthew Hoffman found a boy and his bourbon line. What in the Willy Wonka chocolate factory is this behind me? <laughs> this is Jackie. She's our hybrid still. She has a name. She does. 
We are a veteran and family owned distillery based in LA County. We're actually LA's first legally distilled bourbon. R6 is a, a tribute paying homage to my family for my great grandfather and his five brothers, the six Rubens brothers that built the Rubens Rialto Theater back in Chicago in 1926. Fast forward four generations, the distillery was my brainchild that uh, came to fruition. And That's you have it. like an actual production line. Yep. So like Lucy and Ethel style, you are making like, yes. that's so cool. Yes. <laughs> I like the um, reference. We make alcohol and then we actually heat it up, evaporate it, and that's the process of distilling distillation. Whiskey is our overarching umbrella, but we've got bourbon under that. We've got a rye. We have a blue corn bourbon and a single malt and a caramella caramel flavored whiskey. Wow, they all sound really good, but I live in West Hollywood. I don't do carbs, so the rye is not going to work for me. R6 bourbon and the R6 vodka are my go-tos. And if I want something really rich, it's gonna be the R6 single malt or the R6 blue corn bourbon. Got it. I've been looking for something really rich in this town for a long time, and I report <laughs> I am still single. Still single, sir. But if anybody's watching. We just won awards, both a gold and a silver on the bourbon and a triple gold on the vodka, uh, and a few other accolades that just came in. The speakeasy thing, I think also, you know, talking about romanticism with spirits making and the whole whiskey industry, it just has this kind of like esoteric vibe and feel of, I want to go to a place that I can't be or I'm not supposed to be. So this is the speakeasy, huh? This is it, sir. <gasps> Olivia, distill my heart. What are you doing here? Um, oh, what's the password? What's the password? I forgot it. Oh, uh, LA Unscripted. <laughs> LA Unscripted. I know I liked it here. LA Unscripted. Okay. Yes. This is the vodka, the okay. R6 vodka. Ooh, that smells good. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is delicious. I love it, and I'm not really a vodka drinker, so. But it's good, yeah? Yeah, it's so good. Smells good. good. Mm. All right, on to the next. We have our rye. Mmm, that goes down easy. I'm gonna keep this one for I, sure. I have a feeling everything goes down easy yeah. here. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, this is the R6 Bourbon Ooh. Whiskey. This is the main event, folks. Bottoms up, girl. I'm not gonna shoot it. <laughs> that one's my favorite. Cheers to El Segundo. El Segundo. Whatever your vision is, whether it's a theater company or whether it's an internet creation or making scarves and beanies or making booze, like take that vision and act on it. You can make it a reality. It's never out of reach. Um, Matthew, Ma Ma Matthew, <laughs> Matt, Matthew, what do you do? Speak less, what? speak easy. What do you yes. do? If you can't beat them, join right, them. All right, all right. Let's go. Okay. My trunk is open. Go, go, go. go. A speakeasy, I love speakeasies. All right, now if vodka's your thing, I've got just the company. This spot's in Glendale, and the product is so good, we actually had cocktails for breakfast. Breakfast of champions. So are you ready to get some drinks? It's 11 a.m. and I'm ready to get drinks going. Vintage Distilling is a distilled spirits plant located in the heart of Los Angeles, minutes from downtown, specializing in premium vodkas. We decided to make vodka because Los Angeles didn't really have a producer of distilled spirits uh, that, that was significant around here that anybody had ever heard of. I mean, this is my hometown. I've been here since I, I was born in Glendale, right? And we're standing here in Glendale doing this. It was all about making a premium spirit in Los Angeles uh, and, you know, something high quality that uh, we can be proud of and say it's from Los Angeles. I'm Lithuanian. Your husband's Lithuanian. He is. And honey vodka is something that is very strong in the Lithuanian culture. The honey vodka was really the kind of this brainchild that we've been making for years. You know, our grandparents made it. Everybody had like a blend of their own. And so we decided to take that and take a modern twist on it. Oh, that is so good. Wow. My grandparents used to always have it around, and then my parents continued that tradition as we were going forward, and now here I am doing it on a completely different level. We worked really hard to get that blend correct so that you get what you want, you get the honey up front, but you also get a little bit of that kick of the vodka in the back so that you have a nice, you know, juxtaposition to the, the flavors. 
You wrote into us, and I want to read you this. Hello, we are big fans of everything KTLA. We are a small batch handcrafted vodka company in Los Angeles. We make our vodkas in Glendale. We would love to be featured on your show. Thank you so much for your consideration. So are you a fan of LA Unscripted? It's on every day. I mean, we were in Bahamas, and we were watching KTLA there. Amazing. <laughs> and then when we answered, were you surprised? Of course. We had just come back from Disneyland that day, so I was checking my emails like exhausted. I was like, what? <laughs> this is happening? <laughs> no way. And then we're here today. And now you're here today. So what are you making right now? We are making the uh, honey lavender lemonade. That is a beautiful drink. Garnish with a little lemon and voila. Oh my God. Wow. I wasn't expecting that. That is my new summer drink right there. Okay, so this is the mojito. Really good. That's almost like a vodka soda with just a hint of mint, which makes it so much more refreshing, but not too sweet or sticky. This is our honey Rita. Love it. It's so good. How is it launching an alcohol brand and working with your wife? See, I'd, I'd kill my, my husband and I would kill each other. Working with my wife is great, actually. I mean, I, I, we, we work well together. I wouldn't have it any other way. Another awesome couple, and the drinks were truly fabulous. When we come back, a couple of breweries and some sake. LA Unscripted serving up lots more when we come back. Back to LA Unscripted, I'm Dana Devin from Green Bar Distillery in downtown LA. And while they don't make beer here, fear not, we found the spots that do. Up first, the Deets on Lawless Brewery. As soon as I started brewing about 10 years ago, I think I was on batch two when I decided this is what I want to spend the rest of my life doing. So it's been working toward that for the past five years. I mean, really, when I was brewing in my garage, it was definitely a work in progress. <laughs> I mean, it was I think it was decent for homebrew, but really it was assembling this team that enabled us to kind of take it to the next level. For me, it's kind of like playing a piano. You know, I mean, it's just like when you know your keys, you know what I mean, and you know all your instruments, it's the same for me with like the taps. Tyler was working at a renowned beer bar in downtown LA at the time. Where does your enthusiasm for beer come in? Uh, well, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, that helps a lot. A little bit. Go Bucks. Uh, I was just really lucky enough to work at a brewery in Milwaukee when I was like 20 years old. You know, Lakefront Brewery kind of gave me my sword and my shield by means of an education. You give it a little slide. From there I was like, wow, I want to do this somewhere where it's not negative 20. This beer just came out yesterday. When he mentioned, like I said, five years ago, you know, oh yeah, I want you to manage my brewery someday. I was like, yeah, man, let me know. And then... <laughs> <laughs> this is where all the fermenters are. This is where the, the beer actually ferments. Where do you come in? Well, I make the beer. <laughs> I'll hand this off to you. Okay. And we just literally dump it in there. Like the whole thing? The whole thing. Ben found me languishing at a brewery in Westlake <laughs> Village. Uh, Here there's like basically a corkscrew in there that kind of pushes all that malt. It's uh, kind of a career change for me. Originally I was a scientist. Uh, I ran a lab for um, a better part of a decade. This is the, uh, what we call the brew deck. But I was a home brewer the entire time. So, you know, simply it was kind of a, a hobby that kind of grew into an obsession. Kind of all the malt that we crush over there, it gets collected into this uh, grain hopper, essentially. It was time to make a change and decided to, uh, you know, resign from my position and go to brewing school. Uh, ended up going to Siebel, which is, uh, it's a brewing school in Chicago, but part of that is an international program where you actually end your, your brewing education in Munich, Germany. <laughs> So for what we're drinking, I mean, how much trial and error is involved in this? Oh, that, yeah, a lot. These ones, yeah. a, a lot. I mean, a oh. lot of them, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me why here in North Hollywood. It was kind of a neighborhood in need of a brewery. I think yeah, we all absolutely. feel that same way yeah. about that. It's all about community. It's just like, we can't do what we do without community. I tell people this time and time again. I was like, we need two things right now, community and beer. Those are two really powerful things uh, and I think a lot of us have been deprived of those things in the past uh, year and a half. So it's really a pleasure to be able to provide that for North Hollywood. You know, to be North Hollywood's first brewery is, you know, an honor. Honestly, this show is making me thirsty. 
Thank goodness we have drinks. All right, Soldacop, we'll follow the golden road and head to Sawtell for sake. LA Unscripted will be right back. Back to LA Unscripted. I'm Dana Devin from the Green Bar Distillery in downtown Los Angeles. We've been exploring SoCal small business breweries and distilleries, and right now it's time to live local at Golden Road. So Golden Road's perfect atmosphere here for food, for great beer, and for sports. Golden Road was founded in 2011 by Meg Gill. At the time, she was the youngest female founder of a brewery in the history of the US. Really what she wanted to create was, was a sense of community first, and then to bring the freshest beer uh, to kind of the hop crazed consumers of Los Angeles. So we are a 24 hour brewery, so our guys, our brewers back there, they're always cranking away. We've got you know, probably 10 different styles of beer in, in our tanks at all times. We're just constantly churning out the freshest of the fresh. We've had, historically had a, a partnership with the Dodgers since 2018. Our Dodgers Blonde is a blonde ale. Really is an amazing place to come watch sports. We have a 20 foot screen out front, uh, outdoor space. Uh, so, you know, very safe, bring family, dogs, anybody who, who would like to come enjoy. Okay, let's totally switch it up now and explore one of my favorite cocktails and how it gets made, sake. This show is all about hidden gems and I just found one. It's right off of Sawtell Boulevard in West LA. You're gonna love this, come with me. All right, clue number one. Hey Dana, how's How it going? How are you? To the coaching room. Oh my god, I'm so excited. This is it. Oh my god, in a can. I love it. And now we drink. And now we drink. Sawtell Sake is handcrafted, locally sourced, and sustainably produced. Our whole goal is to mainstream sake. The can is 200 milliliters, very hand friendly, uh, very transportable. You can take it to the beach, take it to the barbecue. It's so, honestly so good. You know what, it's almost like the sake version of like a Pinot Grigio mm. or like a Chardonnay. Cause it's so like summery and light and airy. Uh, when we were starting this, we asked people if they know what sake is. We would then ask people, do you like sake? And then we would actually ask them what their favorite brand of sake was. You know, like five to 10% of people would be able to name one brand. So we just thought, here you have this, this beverage category that people know, that people like, uh, but that just, you know, has been mismarketed, is kind of misunderstood. This is all from four ingredients. Rice, water, yeast, and koji. This is our private tasting room. A lot of what we do actually here is sample people on, on different types of ways to, to have sake. So we think sake is actually a really great mixer in cocktails. It actually pairs with a lot of food that you normally wouldn't expect. You know, most people have only had sake with sushi. This is almost like a vodka soda with lime. But now you could start ordering a sake soda with lime. This is our sake uh, passion fruit margarita. Oh my God, this is, this is unbelievable. Mmm, this is sweet and salty and spicy all in one. So how much is this alcohol per volume? 16%. Alcohol per volume, is that right? 16% uh, is a lot. They're tiny but mighty. Uh, so, <laughs> okay. uh, so that little can is actually the equivalent of like two, two um, white claws essentially. No wonder. <laughs> My whole approach to making sake is very traditional. So our branding and everything, the way that we present ourselves is very American, but the way that I brew is, is very traditional. Just because there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of Japanese brewers perfecting this art, and it's a very cumbersome uh, thing to do. So you started making it in your closet? Yeah, I, uh, I got interested in, in rice fermentation uh, and slowly just complicated the process until I got to basically making sake out of my house. 
The choice of the name is really just to represent uh, the Sawtell neighborhood. So Troy has lived here for about 15 years. You know, this is his home. Uh, Sawtell was uh, one of the only places that early Japanese immigrants could could settle in Los Angeles and they congregated here. And uh, during the war, most of them were interned and lost all of their property and, and uh, assets and, um, and basically had to start from nothing. Um, but those same immigrants, a lot of them came back and resettled the area and turned Sawtell into the wonderful community that it is today. And it's one of four designated Japan towns in the US. I'm super proud of that. This is where we really felt like, you know, if we can start a sake wave, um, that this was a great neighborhood to do it in. So I have to say, this has been so amazing because now I really understand sake more and I understand all the possibilities of sake more than I ever did before. Yeah, and that's exactly why we have the taste room open, to, to show people how amazing rice fermentation can be. Rice is a totally underutilized grain. Uh, people are used to drinking fermented grapes and beers and all kinds of fermented things, but rice is such a beautiful, beautiful expression. And that is all the time we have for tonight. Thank you for joining us and thank you so much to Green Bar Distilleries and this amazing cocktail. We hope we gave you a couple cool new spots to visit. We'll see you next time, everyone. Mm. Cheers. Good night.